I'm Michael from uh, DTCO. So what is that? DTCO actually is a company specialized in blockchain. So like uh, blockchain is very vague, right? Are you specializing in a specific way to implement it? Yes, actually we specialize mostly for healthcare solutions. So we have like research in healthcare, we have like hospital directly for the patients in healthcare. So how is it possible to use blockchain with healthcare and why? Basically it's like we can use blockchain as like a replacement for cloud services in healthcare. The difference is it's not stored in the cloud, it's stored in the decentralized blockchain solutions. So, uh, because patient data is sensitive, yes. so it's, uh, people are scared to put it on Google Cloud or Amazon or what? Yeah, Google Cloud is very, it's really the service, the issue with that is that Google owns your medical data afterwards. So basically they can sell it to anywhere they want, they own your data. With the blockchain solution, actually, it's owned by the patient. So basically, anybody that wants to access the patient data need to have the authorization from the patient. So, um, how how do you implement it? Did you just take some blockchain and you you, you package it up, or yeah. you did something specific? About basically, it? we have built a blockchain operating system for the hospital. Operating system. Yeah, basically, it's the, that allow the hospital to build their own application on top of their uh, operation system because basically all hospitals have their own applications, and they don't want to like um, have a new application just come from a company because this, that might not match their requirements. So we just build the operating system of blockchains, which they can integrate any application for the hospital, like for example, data management for patients. They can integrate applications also for IoT, for pharma company research as well. So you're not doing a cryptocurrency? No, we're not doing cryptocurrency at all. Uh, but you're taking, is it uh, Ethereum? Right? Well, because our technology is based on Ethereum sidechain. So basically we use Ethereum, but we only use the private sidechain because it solves a lot of problems. Like for example, the latency is much, much faster. So we can have a lot of transactions per second compared to the public chain of Ethereum. Uh, so, uh, is that like, to make a private, uh, uh, what do you call it, blockchain, yeah. is that an easy thing to do in the industry? For is that like following some instructions and then you can do that? Yeah, on Ethereum actually it's pretty simple. So now there's a lot of developers doing sidechain on Ethereum for different applications. Healthcare is one of them. And how about making an OS on the blockchain? Is that a standard thing many people do or are you like revolutionizing something? Yeah, OS is more like a specialty basically. Like a lot of us will build like some small application on Ethereum, but what we're doing is more sophisticated than that. We want to build a whole OS. So like a lot of application can be built on top of it. So people are basically, they don't need to think about blockchain. They just need to think about the application and we're taking care of all the blockchain architecture be behind it. So what does it mean to make an OS in the blockchain? It means like basically you have the application, it's running like simultaneously in many nodes, like for example in a hospital, in a server, at the, at the company or elsewhere. And those people can use this architecture to build their application on top of it. Like any application can be built on top of it. It's a bit like Windows, you have application on top of Windows. Right, you have like your Windows page and you can have the application running on top of it. And it's the same, except that now, yeah, your like OS is not on the on personal computer. Is is in the blockchain? Isn't it just a, like a network? Or why do you call it an OS? Well, because we think like the OS is the more specific term for it. It could be called also a platform, but I think operating system is more relevant in this case because basically it's the whole architecture is there and people can build on top of it. So I've heard a lot about these uh, uh, cryptocurrencies and the ICOs. Yeah. But what other things are like good about the uh, blockchain, like what what good things are people doing out there? Are there some very good examples of how people are using it nicely? I think like everywhere where there's a problem with data security, blockchain can be a very good use. And also the other place where it can be good use is auditing. For example, like at Walmart, they have a blockchain solution right now for their auditing regarding the supply chain. So basically, they want to know where is the data come from. Using blockchain is much more safe and easy to audit. But uh, uh, security can it all just be done on the server and it can be done as securely and the block as the blockchain. How can you guarantee it's more secure when you do blockchain stuff blockchain compared to just security. like uh, Amazon Cloud? Yeah, the, the problem is with Amazon Cloud, the cryptology, uh, the, the security is not very really comparable to blockchain. Uh, basically, all cloud services they are centralized, so all the data are put together. So basically, it's a hacker breach that you can access to all the data. But it's still encrypted. 
and that encryption uh, strength is similar to what's used in blockchain. But the Amazon no? encryption is like one encryption for a lot of data. So basically, like once the encryption is broken, the hacker can access all the data. Blockchain is different encryption for all block of data. So like every patient in the hospital, for example, they have different encryption. You cannot have the problem of mass leakage of data. But don't these, I mean, I don't know exactly how they do all these cloud services and stuff. Yes. But I would imagine that they have a more security than just having one password for all of Amazon, you know? There's like, uh, I would guess every single customer is encrypting data that with their own kind of uh, no, they don't thing. Have, they don't have the security for each user. Basically, when they store the data, they store for everybody. And of course, Unencrypted. It's not, it's not necess- I don't know if they're always encrypted because Amazon, like every cloud service, will have their own technology and own security. But basically, they're not s- splitting the security like for every encryption of every user. It's impossible. But wouldn't it be easy for them to do that? You no, know, it's actually very complicated because then encryption different for each user, then how can I access the data of each user very easily? The only way to do that is on blockchain. That's the blockchain base of technology. All right. But I would guess that every application on these cloud services is like a separate kind of, you know, like a password or a separate kind of encryption system, but maybe it's not. Well, actually, the problem is like, yeah, they have a lot of applications, but the applications all start from the same database. Basically, they need to share the database. And that's where hackers want to attack. They want to attack the database to get like credit card information or data information from people, from users. But on your network or your OS, there's still a, like a, a kind of like an admin access to the whole thing, no? No, there's nothing like that. Basically, if the, if the patient loses completely out the password, the security we put in place for him, and he cannot retrieve the data, we cannot help him to retrieve the data. It's, it's lost. So we have other solutions to, to patch this issue, but basically, we don't own any data. You don't own any data? Like okay. the company managing the blockchain, they don't own the data. The, for example, in the case of hospital, the data is owned by the users, by the patients. Okay. So they can share with the doctor if they want. Exactly. But then the but patient has to be alive and conscious and well, be able to remember a password. Well, but actually, they might write it on there's a piece other of paper. solution to like, uh, access the password. For example, we use, can use biometrics. So maybe you cannot need to remember a password. You use the biometric, the eyes or the finger to to encode it, and to, then it's kind of like same as password. So what's the status of your company? Are you, how many people are you? Do you have colleagues? Well, actually, in the pharmaceutical, we already have like 26 pharmaceutical companies. They join an alliance with us, and we offer a blockchain solution. And for hospital, we already have like a TMUH in, in Taipei using our services. So basically, they're already patient using our blockchain services uh, for the hospital. 26 pharmaceutical companies? Yes, uh, that's right. From all over the world? Uh, mostly in Taipei. There's one from France as well. And then uh, there's one hospital here in tai- Taiwan who's starting to use to yes. testing it, right? So basically that's our pilot. And after that, the other hospital in Taiwan uh, looking to join this year. But what's next for you then? Yeah, after that, then we hope to go more worldwide. So like hospital, we have already dialogue with like hospital in Thailand and Japan. Japan, there's a hospital very interested to join us this year as well. And if this works, it could be applied to more than just hospitals, right? Yeah, any hospital actually. And not just hospitals, like healthcare providers in general. Everywhere where privacy is important, I would guess it could be much more than just medic, uh, you know, healthcare. Yeah, it's not just healthcare, of course, like uh, research in pharmaceutical, like uh, IP research, for example, is, is a very big industry where like, they want to protect their data. They don't want people to know in general what their research is about. They need to protect it, then that can be put on the blockchain as well. Is there any way to DDoS the, the whole blockchain so nobody can use it? That would be pretty bad, right? If somebody attacks, the, like yeah. figures out where the servers are, it sends a lot of data, and then they're like overloaded. Yeah, actually for blockchain, if uh, somebody attacks your hardware data, actually blockchain is the best solution for that because basically we work on with many nodes at the same time. If one node is attacked, the hardware is all broken, the other nodes will automatically take over. So basically for hospital, there is no like a failure of system and like nothing is working anymore. The doctor cannot access the patient's data. With blockchain, is many nodes. So basically, even if they start shut down like their hardware somewhere, this other will take over. And they can continue seamlessly. So, uh, so are you based here in Taiwan? Yeah, I'm based Taipei? in Taiwan. So basically, our company is from Taiwan. It's called DTCO. But how many people? Right now, our team is like only 12 people. 12. But what do they do? Are they engineers? Mostly engineers so far because we focus on the development of the application. And we have a few people now for doing business development with Japan and Thailand and in Taiwan as well. And what's been your, your background? Are you the CEO? 
No, no, I'm not CEO. <laughs> what are you? I'm just a business development as well. I worked before in Adventex. So I was more used to industrial IT and I also worked with hospital before as well.